Hi, welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about stationary points, increasing and decreasing functions. Okay, a few examples on this. This is the third video for the uh, differentiation topic for P1 Maths. Okay, a stationary point is a point on a graph where the slope is zero. Uh, a function is increasing if it has a positive slope and it's decreasing if it has a negative slope. So if we're thinking in terms of the derivative, these definitions apply. Stationary point is when the derivative is equal to zero. It's increasing when the derivative is greater than zero and decreasing when the derivative is less than zero. Those definitions are very important. If we have a look at this little graph here, you can see the stationary points at B, D and F, okay, where the slope is zero. They're called stationary points. The function increasing at C, and at G going up, and the functions decreasing at A and at E. To determine what kind of stationary point you've got, we've got a test for that, the second derivative test. So um, the way that we can discover whether the stationary point is a maximum point or a minimum point is this test here. The second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. Okay, so here's the notations. A little bit tricky for this notation. d squared y over dx squared. That's the second derivative. Or a little bit easier, f double dash x. Okay, if the second derivative at the point that you've found is greater than zero, then that point is a minimum point. Okay, so you've found a stationary point. If the second derivative is greater than zero, then that's a minimum point. If the second derivative is less than zero, then that is a maximum point. Now there are a few exceptions to this. Um, if you look at a curve like y equals x to the power of four, what you'll find is at x equals zero, the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so there's a few exceptions to this rule. You won't have any of those when you have to do this in the exam. Okay, you just need to know this test. So I kind of think of this uh, kind of opposites, you know, the, the second derivative is greater than zero, minimum, less than zero, maximum. Okay, so here we've got a classic question, the coordinates of the stationary points and determine their nature. So what they're asking for here when they say determine their nature is just, is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Okay, in, in the syllabus we don't have to know about points of inflection, that's one thing just to note here. Uh, so if you know a little bit about what a point of inflection is, where the second derivative is equal to zero. You don't have to know that stuff here. Okay. So we've got x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 2. That's the curve we're talking about. I'll show you a picture later on down here. You do not need to know what this uh, graph looks like. Okay, so from the definition, the stationary points are when the derivative is equal to zero. So the derivative here, 4x cubed minus 16x. Solving that equal to zero, you do not want to divide by x. You just want to factorize. So highest common factor here is 4x. 4x brackets x squared minus 4. So we've got either 4x equals 0, so that means x equals 0, or x squared minus 4 equals 0. So either factorizing that, adding 4 over, taking the square root, there's two solutions to this second part here, 2 or minus 2. So I've got three different stationary values here, 0, 2, and minus 2. Notice we want the coordinates. Just take a note of that, guys. If it says coordinates, you've got to have the y values as well as the x values. So going back to the original equation, substituting 0, 2, and minus 2 gives me these three y values. So therefore, I've got these three stationary points. Now, we want to know what kind of stationary points are they? Minimum or maximum? So I'm going to do the second derivative. So that is the derivative of this function here. So number down the front, 12x squared minus 16 is the second derivative. And then what I'm going to do is substitute in each of those three points. Okay, so I put 0 in and I get negative 16. A negative value for the second derivative means that that point's a maximum. I then substitute x equals 2 into the second derivative. So I replace x with 2 here. I get a positive value. And it doesn't matter what value this is, guys. How big it is, as long as it's positive, it means you've got a minimum. And I substitute minus 2 in there, 12 times minus 2 squared minus 16, and I also get 32. So this point here is also a minimum. 
Now, strictly speaking, we're talking about local minimum and maximum. They're not the biggest or smallest values for the whole function, but in that little area, they're the biggest. So we call them local maximum and minimums. Here's a picture. So at x equals 0, you can see we've got a local maximum. At minus 2 and at 2, we've got local minimums. In this example, we wanted to find the values of x for which this function is increasing. Now you need to go back to your definition. Increasing means that the derivative is greater than 0. Okay, so if we do the derivative here, 12x minus 3x squared, we want to know when that is greater than 0. So we've got a bit of a quadratic inequality here. Factorize again, there's a common factor of 3x. 4 minus x is greater than 0. If you remember how to do these quadratic inequalities, 0 and 4 are the points where this is equal to 0. So if we drew a little graph of what the derivative looks like, it would look like this. And yours doesn't have to be real accurate like this. Just going through 0 and 4. And we want to know what's the values of x where this is greater than 0. So clearly all the values of x between 0 and 4, the curve is above the x-axis. Okay. So that means all the x values between 0 and 4, not including 0 and 4, are going to make this thing greater than 0. So therefore, <clears throat> the function is increasing for x values between 0 and 4 and not including 0 and 4. If we look at the graph of the actual function, this is what it looks like. You can see that the curve is increasing between 0 and 4. It's going up. Here's a neat little demo of the derivative and stationary and increasing functions. We can see a, a man here riding a little surfboard on this wave. Now what we're going to see as we go along is the derivative traced out. So at the moment you can see the slope the guy is at is at 0, so the derivative down here is 0. Now watch what happens as he moves along the curve. Okay, He's going up now, so he's increasing, so the slope's positive. He gets to another point where the slope is 0. Okay, so you can see down the bottom, the derivative is 0. Now he's going to go down, so he's decreasing. Okay, so down below you can see the derivative is negative. There's a point right here where it starts uh, going more positive. So it's decreasing and decreasing, and now it starts going positive again. That's called a point of inflection. We don't have to know about those right now. Okay, and we're down to here, which again the slope is 0. Now he's going to be increasing, going up. Still going up, still going up till we get this point right at the top here. We chopped off his head. He's so high. Uh, once again, slope zero, and then he's going to go down this wave here, and the slope's going to be negative. 